We got breaking news in the NBA with the Brooklyn Nets firing their head coach Jacques Vaughn this morning. The move comes with the Nets just outside of that play-in pitcher in the Eastern Conference with a record of 21 and 33 losses on the year. In his final game as the head coach of the Nets, it was not pretty. They lost by 50 to the Boston Celtics right before the All-Star break. And here we are the Monday after he is no longer the head coach. Vaughn, by the way, 71 and 68 over two separate stints as a coach in Brooklyn. He was the interim coach, if you remember, briefly after Kenny Atkinson was let go in 2020 and then of course replacing Steve Nash early in that 2022-23 season and right now they sit 11th in the Eastern Conference two and a half games back from 10th spot with the ATL. I want to bring in my guy Sam Quinn and, and I think he thought he was going to get some sleep today because we had All-Star on Sunday and you had some time to maybe dive in and chill out. Mm -mm. Jock Vaughn is out the door in Brooklyn. Your initial reaction to that news this morning. Yeah, what I want to key in on here is a report from Ian Begley that came out after the firing. Ian's as connected as anyone in New York. Some within the Nets had concerns about keeping Vaughn as it would relate to recruiting another star player. This was a transitional period for the Nets. When they initially built their super team around Kyrie Irving, Kevin Durant, they had a chance to keep Vaughn, who was the interim after they fired Kenny Atkinson. They chose Steve Nash. Initially, when they fired Nash, there were reports that they were chasing Ime Udoka. Ultimately, that didn't come to fruition. They promoted uh, Vaughn as an interim. Now, they're getting back into the star chase, and they seem to have decided that Jock Vaughn is more of a bridge coach. He's not a permanent coach, not somebody you want to build a championship team around, and now they're moving on. You see it now there, the numbers, they started 13 and 10, very respectable in the Eastern Conference, but since then, 8 and 23, you mentioned maybe looking for that star coach. They missed out on Doc Rivers by a couple of weeks because he's now in Milwaukee. So where do they go here as they're looking for that next leader? The first name I would keep an eye on here is Mike Budenholzer. Sean Marks and Budenholzer both come from the San Antonio tree. That's obviously, there are a lot of coach GM combos that look to stay connected after San Antonio. The last, the first coach that Sean Marks hired in Brooklyn was Kenny Atkinson, who coached under Mike Budenholzer in Atlanta. So that's the big name coach that I would keep an eye on here. But I would also expect the Nets to cast a wide net. Remember, the last coach they hired was Jacques Vaughn, who they promoted internally. I wonder if they might be looking back on that and thinking, wow, I wish we would have looked into a few more candidates. So I would expect them to cast a wide net. But if you were looking for a big name coach to connect them to now, Budenholzer is the name that makes the most sense to me. So if it's Bud there, uh, you talk about the players that's on this roster. You got a Ben Simmons that, you know, sometimes we don't see him. You got the two cams that came over that trade, sending KD to Phoenix. With this roster in place, how many stars they need to maybe look like a contender in the future? I think they're at least one significant upgrade away. I mean, the name that we're all going to connect to the Nets is Donovan Mitchell. He's been connected to the New York area forever, first to the Knicks. The Nets are quietly a little bit better positioned to acquire him. They have all of those premium draft picks to trade from Phoenix and Dallas. They're going to have max cap space in the summer of 2025 when Ben Simmons' contract expires. They can pursue him if he reaches free agency. If you put someone like a Mitchell, a lead ball handler, into a role next to Mikhail Bridges, who's not a number one scorer, but has improved a lot offensively and is a great defender, now you really have something. You've got role players, you've got wings, you've got defenders, you've got shooters. But right now, they're clearly one primary ball handler short. Cam Thomas, great scorer, not somebody you can run an offense through. And as much as they would have loved to have built a fast-paced offense around Ben Simmons, We've seen this year and in several years in the past, he just struggles to stay on the court. It's crazy to think that we're a couple years removed from this team having a big three in generational talents and now needing a head coach and some help to maybe get in the postseason in the future. We'll see how that pans out in New York. Why not? Sam Quinn, as always, appreciate it. When you talk about coaches saying bye-bye or maybe shown stage right, it's been a lot this year, or maybe just in the Eastern Conference. The Wizards, of course, Wes Sunsell shown the door not too long ago. Adrian Griffin, we know that story. Doc Rivers replacing him. Brian Keefe there in Washington. Now the Nets, they will be the third team looking for a new HC or at least an interim role to take over the rest of the way as we get into the second half of the NBA season.